Good morning. Um, my area is population health and public health. Um, and one of the most important things for me is that you need to put people at the centre of developing research in the area of health because we have to find some social innovations to improve the possibilities for people to stay healthy and become more healthy. And what I really am interested in is how social innovation um, occurs in different contexts and in some cases is effective and brings about change and in other ways it doesn't. And that very much depends on what the environment is in that innovation takes place. What, what we're really interested in is it's not about the individual, it's about the way people come together and the way those interactions and dialogues between people help to create um, the opportunities for an idea to move into practice. And for that to happen, you need the right infrastructure for that to take place. We need something that is a dialogue that includes the people themselves who are health we are trying to support and create. It's not just about those in power in agencies or those who actually produce uh, the medical care. What we want to do is to give value to the different diversities and ways of knowing about the world and bring that different sorts of ways of knowing together to interact with each other. We all see the world very differently and we shouldn't assume that health researchers have the keys for understanding what works and what doesn't work in practice. We might be looking for the keys under one lamppost. We need other people to help us with the light to see the keys and find those keys. I'm new to Alberta. I arrived in January, just before the worst snowstorm in Edmonton, which happened over the weekend after I arrived on the Wednesday. Um, I've worked also in many parts of the world, including Sweden, uh, the UK and Kyrgyzstan um, and what I've been doing is evaluating social interventions that support health, what I call deliberate interruptions. I don't actually like the word intervention because it implies something coming outside and just intervening and trying to control things. And I can show you lots of examples of how participatory action research, which is the way I've been researching for the last 20 years, actually if helps people to effectively bring about change in their own everyday lives that supports their health. It's an approach that gets rid of that so-called knowledge practice divide because knowledge is not created somewhere else and then put into practice. In participatory action research, knowledge and practice, theory and practice, learning and change, research and change are all integrated as one. And so you don't have that divide because people start to own the outcomes of the research they're directly involved in. And by being directly involved, I mean being involved from the right from the beginning in determining the research question, being involved in the data collection, being involved in the analysis, being involved in developing the deliberate interruption, and then evaluating it. A lot of countries are actually investing in this sort of research. Um, the NIH in the States and the CDC have done a lot of investment in prevention research centers to encourage uh, public involvement in research. And you heard from Sally yesterday what's been done to develop an infrastructure in the UK. And that's been happening in Sweden. And my experience in Kyrgyzstan, it's actually been using participatory action research to create the local rural healthcare system by integrating health promotion and healthcare, starting from the villages and the village people themselves and working upwards. I want you to think about somebody who has been researched out, a poor person perhaps in Liverpool where I, I come from, or perhaps here somewhere in Edmonton. Constantly researchers come and ask them questions about their lives and their lifestyles, Constantly they hear messages that they've got to do this or that to change their behavior. And they think, well, why should I bother? I am researched out. I don't want to be enrolled. Why should I answer your questions? Because nothing changes. So what participatory action research tries to do is to work with people to bring about the change and give them power to change the things that are important to them in their own lives. 
And it's about valuing different people in different ways and valuing their ways of looking at the world. What we want to do is create relevant, appropriate, understandable and practical solutions to health problems in the world. What we need to do is invest in infrastructures that enable people to participate in the research process. And that may be changing the way our universities operate and the way they function. I had the pleasure of working uh, to evaluate a innovation project um, uh, developed by the Department of Health in England uh, called Pace Setters, and I was involved in looking at some particular case study sites. One of those sites included a project which had been developed, and it was about the co-design of health promotional uh, prevention services with people with learning disabilities. And they had developed uh, ways of helping people to access um, breast um, uh, prevention uh, cancer services. And they've actually developed the ideas further to cover diabetes and other areas. And because I'm into participatory evaluation, I involved the people themselves, the people with learning disabilities, in evaluating their, the service that they had contributed to. I was a bit wary about that, this because I have not had much experience of working with people with learning disabilities. And although I've developed methodologies and methods of working with people in different way, different literal literacy levels, uh, this was a, a challenge. But I had people in my team who had that experience. And we ran a workshop, which was a sort of like a focus group to get some ideas of their experiences. And oh, unfortunately, I was introduced at the beginning of the workshop as Professor Springett. And in the UK, Professor is rather high on the, on the, um, the pedestal because you don't become a professor. Not everybody's called Professor. You have, to get, you have to come up to the top of the hierarchy to get that. And I didn't like that because I didn't want them to feel sort of um, dominated by uh, somebody who's an expert. But actually, it didn't turn out too bad because at the end, when we were having um, lunch, uh, one of the ladies came up to me and she sat by me and said, now, Jane, what have you taken away from today? What have you learned? And when she said that, I knew then we had worked properly with these people, respecting their dignity, giving them value, so they felt able to come to us and talk to with us as equal partners. And that is what participatory action research brings to me because I'm constantly learning but it also shows me that we have to work in partnership with people as true partners to feel so they can have the dignity to change their own lives as well as helping others to change theirs. So if you want to know more about this, I hope that Alberta will think about investing in helping people develop participatory practices. I've got a book on it with a co-author uh, Margaret Ledworth from the UK, but also I'm part of an international collaboration on participatory research for health, which is looking at quality and methodologies to put this type of research in the same category as you would have RCTs or well-established qualitative research methods. So on that, uh, thank you for listening. <laughs>